so welcome to the third lecture of this week so so we are talking about lexical semantics and there we uh, dealt with what are the various relations we can establish between the word forms so we were talking specific uh, entities now that are lexemes different items in my lexicon and we also talked about wordnet that what are the different uh, relations you can establish between various lexemes in wordnet and uh, what are the different standard forms like using syn sets and what is the hierarchy tree of wordnet how do you use that to find word similarity and so on and finally we ended up with saying that there is one inherent problem in using wordnet that is when you get a new sentence you do not know what is the particular sense of a word that is being used in the sentence so you cannot apply the methods very uh, directly so so that's fair so we deal with this problem that given a sentence for each word find out what is the sense in the word net that is being used here and this problem is called word sense disambiguation it's a very classical problem in nlp and a uh, lot of research has happened in over last few decades so we will uh, talk about what are the most important methods for dealing with this problem and we will talk about both simple approaches and machine learning based approaches and also some unsupervised approaches so we will cover that in in the next two lectures so starting today so this is our topic that is word sense disambiguation so let me uh, just define the problem again so we have seen in this week that there are many words that are having several meanings and then we can call them different senses of the same word so now example can be of the word bus so you can use bus or base depending on whether you want to use that in the context of fish or music now the problem is whenever you are given this word are we talking about music or fish okay so let's see these two sentences here the first sentence is an electric guitar and bass bass player stand off to one side not really part of the scene just as a sort of not not to bring go expectations perhaps and this is one sentence and the second sentence is talking about some st strip bars in in lake mead were too skinny so now the same word is being used in both the sentences and i have to find out whether uh, the word is being used in the sense of fish or music now once you see this sentence how do you find out that what is the uh, meaning of of the of this word in the sentence you will try to look around the context in what context this word is being talked about accordingly you will choose one sense over another one now this whole the field of word sense disambiguation so this deals with this problem that so i have to find out the sense of the word depending the context now how can i do that computationally so 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 we can define the task of disambiguation that is to determine which of the senses of an ambiguous word is invoked in a particular use of a word so we say we are doing this problem only for the ambiguous words when a word has more than one sense in a particular use of that word what is the sense that has been used now and and as you can see we will deal with this problem by looking at the context of the words used so now how exactly we do that there are many different algorithms that handle this problem so there are approaches based on uh, they are knowledge based approaches that use different overlap based methods for handling that then there are some machine learning based approaches they use supervised approaches unsupervised approaches and semi supervised approaches and also there are some hybrid approaches and in the literature there are a lot of different methods for solving this problem now what we will do we will talk about some very basic methods so that you have the intuition with you that what are the different uh, features what are different methods you can apply for word sense disambiguation so now starting with the knowledge based approaches so there are some sort of overlap based approaches they they try to use some sort of overlap now how do they find this overlap so they would require a machine readable dictionary okay so like wordnet is my machine readable dictionary you can have some other sort of thesaurus also that are in a machine readable form so by machine readable i mean so all the entries and all the information is such that you can easily access that and you can make use of that now so what approaches will do they will try to find the overlap between the features of different senses of an ambiguous word 
that is they we call it science back and the features of the word in its context and they we call it as the context back and they will try to measure the overlap. So, now just to explain this idea let us see I am having a sentence S that contains some words w 1 to w n and the word w i can be used in two senses w i prime and w i double prime it is sense 1 sense 2. Okay. Now, in this sentence this word w i would be used only for one sense and that is what we are assuming this will be true in most of the cases unless the speaker himself wants to imply two different meanings of the same word. So, we will say in general for this word w i we would have only one sense. So, now I want to find out depending on this context whether sense 1 should be taken or sense 2 should be taken. So, idea would be for each sense I will construct a sense back okay, and we will see how do we construct a sense back. So, I will have a so, this I will convert that to a sense back sense back 1 and this I will convert to sense back 2. Now, looking at the context that is you can think of all the words that are coming in the sentence other than this word I will construct a context back. Now, I will try to find out what is the overlap between context back and sense back 1 and what is the overlap here. Okay. And I will take the answer as, as the one sense that is having the highest overlap and this is to explain that simply. I have various senses let us construct the sense backs, construct a context back, take the overlap, take the sense with the maximum overlap. Now, to construct these sense backs and context back you will use various features that are provided in the dictionary that you have. So, features could be like what are the sense definitions that I am having what are the example sentences that are provided, different hypernames, hyponames and so on and any other criteria that you can use from the dictionary. And you will use that to construct both the sense specs and the context spec take the one with the maximum overlap. Now, let us take a simple example or an actual algorithm that, that does that. So, we have LESPs algorithm. So, we talked about this algorithm in the previous lecture also for a different case when we wanted to find out what is the similarity between two different senses. Now, suppose I want to use this, this LESC algorithm for the purpose of word sense disambiguation. So, what it does? So, it constructs the sense backs in context back and how are they constructed? The sense back contains the words in the definition of the candidate sense of the candidate word. So, I have a word that is ambiguous can have multiple senses for each of the senses I will construct one sense back and the sense back is constructed by using the definitions that I have in my dictionary. And how do I construct the context back? I take all the words in my context, take each of the senses of the context word and then take their definitions all these together become my context back. So, I have a single context back and I have multiple sense backs for different senses of the word and then I take the overlap and this overlap is taken by using the less algorithm similar to what we saw in the previous lecture that if there is a match of n a particular n gram I add a score of n square. So, now let us take this case. So, I have this sentence on burning coal we get ash. Now, here the word ash is ambiguous and I want to find out what is the correct sense of this word that is used in this sentence. And suppose for simplicity we are using only the word coal as my context. So, what am I going to do? I will find out I will make different sense backs for the word ash whatever senses are recorded in my word net. and I will consider the context back by using all the definitions of the word coal okay. and then I will try to measure the overlap. So, suppose we do that. So, here is uh, the case from by taking the dictionary definitions from word net. So, ash has three senses. So, one is corresponds to some trees second corresponds to some solid residue and third is to convert in to convert that into ash. And we want to find out what which of the three senses is used here. So, what we will do? We will take the word coal that is the only context word we are using here, but in general you can use any number of context words. 
I take all its sense definitions that are defined, combine them together to make a context pack. So, this whole thing together becomes my context pack. Now, I measure its similarity with each of the sense edge. Okay? And if we do that, we find that for sense 2, three of the words are matching here and sense 2 becomes the winner. So, here what you are seeing, you are also using the stemming. So, this is optional, you might use stemming, you may not use stemming. So, this is the generic idea of less calculator. Okay, I hope this is clear. If I want to use multiple words, I can repeat the same thing. I suppose I am using burning, coal and get all the three words. I will take all their definitions and combine them together into a single context pack and then measure the similarity of each of the senses with this whole context pack. Okay. So, now let us take another scenario, where we have a different kind of thesaurus. So, what is the thesaurus now? For each word, we are told what are the categories these senses, its senses belong to. So, I have some finite set of categories. This can be like finance category, location category, sports category and so on. And each word has been recorded as it has a sense in these, these categories. So, now the problem would be when I am given a sentence, a word can, can have senses in multiple categories, find out what is the appropriate category in this sentence. So, how do we use the this framework here? So, what I will do? So, for each sense of the target word, you find out what is the thesaurus category to which this belongs. Okay. Now, calculate the score for each census by using context words. Now, idea would be the context words again would be having various such thesaurus categories. So, for each context word, I will find out what is the thesaurus category. Overall, I will see by using the context word which thesaurus category is getting the highest count. So, here so, what we will be doing? A context word will add a score of 1 of the sense if the thesaurus category of the word matches that of the sense. So, let us take this sentence the money in this bank fetches an interest of 8 percent per annum. And suppose my ambiguous word here is bank has two senses one in the case of say finance that is for um, the money bank that is also used in the sentence another could be river bank also also can be used as location or something. Okay. And I take these context words money, interest, annum and fetch. Each again would have their own thesaurus categories. So, what we will be doing? I will take all these words money, interest, fetch and annum. I know bank can has, have two different senses finance and location. So, for each of these context words, I will put a 1 if they match any of this thesaurus categories. So, money matches finance, so I will put a 1 here, interest matches finance, again I will put a 1 here, fetch does not meet, meet any of these senses, so both are 0, and a matches finance, again plus 1. And then I will add the scores for both the senses, and I, in here I say that for finance the score is 3, for location score is 0, so I will take the sense of bank edge finance in this particular case. So, these are simple approaches by just taking the dictionary definitions or thesaurus categories. Now, so, so there is one problem in both these approaches that is for disambiguating the sense of a particular word, we are not disambiguating the sense of the other context words. We are taking all the possible senses of them into a single context pack. But suppose you want to solve this problem where in a same in the same sentence there are multiple ambiguous words and you want to disambiguate each of them together, then can we do that. And this can be done by making use of the fact that uh, although each word might have multiple senses, but the particular senses that are being used in this, sen this sentence, they will be somehow connected to each other. So, we want to exploit this and for this we can use some sort of graph based method, similar to what we do in the case of uh, page rank algorithm. So, let me just quickly explain this idea and we will actually deal with this uh, uh, page rank algorithm in detail when we talk about uh, summarization application, but I will try to give you the intuition. So, this is the problem that suppose I have the sentence the church bells no longer rung on Sundays okay. and I can say there are four words bell, ring, church and Sunday and I want to disambiguate the, the senses of these words. And also suppose that from the dictionary, I know what are their sense definitions. 
So, here the word church has three senses, bell has three senses, ring has three senses and Sunday has one sense. And I want to disambiguate the first three words together. So, how do I do that? So, idea would be, so let us treat it as a graph based problem, where for each word I first write down what are dif different senses of this word. So, I have made a vertex for each of the sense of these words. So, there are three, three vertices for bell, three for ring, three for church and one for Sunday. So, I have now 10 vertices in this graph. Now, what would be the idea? I will now try to connect these different vertices together by seeing what is the overlap among different sense definitions. So, I will now try to correct, connect some weighted edges between uh, different sense definitions by using Lesk's, Lesk's method. So, the Lesk method is very similar, simple for finding similarity between two sentences. I use that find out what is the similarity between any two sense definitions and add a weight between these two. And this will give me some sort of matrix like that. So, I have all the sense definitions connected. Now, one thing, one important thing is that for the same word, I will not have to connect its own sense definitions. So, there will not be any edge between S3 and S2 for the same word bell, but there will be edges between different words. So, S3 of bell and S2 of ring would be connected by what is the similarity between these two sense definitions. So, the idea is that now we want to somehow find out that particular combination here. So, one sense for each of the three words such that their overall similarity is the highest. So, they are having the highest similarity and one particular method that can be used for that is uh, using a, a page rank kind of algorithm. So, idea would be if there are multiple, if there are appropriate sense definitions that are similar to each other, if I use the page rank algorithm, they would have very high ranking score, because they will all contribute to each other. So, uh, what do we do? So, uh, for this graph, once we have all the vertices, we have all the edge weights also. We treat it as a uh, problem as if we are finding the page rank for each vertex of this graph. And to give you simple intuition, so now what would we have? So, we have uh, 10 nodes in the graph and I try to connect them by different uh, numbers, these numbers depend on their less similarity. Now, once I have this, so I want to compute the page rank scores for each node. Okay. And now, what is the algorithm for computing page rank score? If we take it the simple idea that is, uh, I will suppose, so this, this page rank is computed in an iterative manner. So, we start with some initial random scores this will be some sort of probability distribution and I use this equation V is equal to V A to find out what will be the page rank score okay, and V denotes the page rank score. And, and how do we actually come up with this score? We start with some initial V 0 and then keep on multiplying A, A square, A cube until it converges and that becomes your page rank score. Okay. So, we will talk about this algorithm in detail later and for now you can just quickly have a look at what, what is the page rank algorithm, but the idea would be once we, we do all that, we will find one page rank score for each node and the nodes that are having a lot of uh, connections uh, with other nodes and with uh, high uh, in degree connection will be given a, a higher page rank score. So, if suppose this node is connected to multiple sense definitions, it is connected to this sense definition, this sense definition and this sense definition. That means, this might be 
one of the important senses in this part for this particular word. An idea would be to find out for each word one sense that is having the highest connections and this would be so someone that will get a high page rank score. So, I will give page rank scores to each of the 10 nodes and then for each word I will pick the one that is having the highest among this set. So, I will take one from each of the set and here I will anyway choose this one and this becomes my final disambiguated sense. So, once I have added all these weighted edges, I will apply the garbage al ranking algorithm. So, this can be page rank algorithm and now once we get all these scores, I will for each word I will choose the one with the highest score. An idea here is the sense, the particular sense that is connected to multiple other senses for multiple words would get a high score and that is the intuition that I want to choose the particular sense that is uh, having a similar definition as many other senses and this I do for each of the word. So, here suppose S 1 for bell 1, S 3 for ring and S 2 for which are selected and they are my final uh, disambiguated senses for these 3 words. Okay. And this is my uh, overall algorithm. Now, we can also use some machine learning based methods and one simple idea would be to use a naive Bayes algorithm. So, naive Bayes algorithm we, were, we are using for doing classification here and what is the classification task? For a given word, there are multiple senses from the sentence find out what is the appropriate sense. So, no, so this is this method has to be word specific and for each word you might have as many classes as the number of senses of this word. So, so the problem here is find out the sense of the word that gives the maximum probability as given f and f will be a set of features that I will extract from the context around this word. So, this uh, for a given word there can be multiple senses I want to find out the sense that is having this score as maximum. Now, because naive base is a generative model, so that means the sense comes on the of first and then the features are, are generated from there different features. So, how do we compute this particular probability? This would be nothing but argmax s probability f given s probability s divided by probability f and because this will be common for all the senses this is argmax over s p s p f given s. Now, p s is nothing but the prior probability of the sense that is if a particular sense of a word is more commonly used that will then you get a high prior and p f given s is what is the probability of different features being observed or generated by the sense. So, in my base model what we do we make this assumption that each of these features are conditionally independent of each other given s given the sense s. So, suppose there are features f 1 to f n. So, I will write it as argmax s p s i is equal to 1 to n probability f i given s ok. And this I will do for each sense and I will I will take the one that is giving me the maximum score. Now, what is important here is what are different features that you will be choosing for your naive Bayes method and these features have to come from the context around the world. So, what, what are different things I can use in the context? I can use what are different part of speech that are being used, what are different words and so on. So, let us see for this task what are the important features. So, this we have already seen. So, with for this task I can use the part of speech of surrounding words and what are different semantic and syntactic features. I can use co-occurrence factor that is what are the different other words this sense is used with and then I can use this 
collocation vector, vector that is what are in general the next word, next to next word, previous word, previous to previous word and their part of speech tags when the word is used in this particular sense. So, I will construct this, uh, this set of feature vector by, by using this all these examples and the two parameters of a model that is the prior probability of the sense and the probability of feature given the sense can be computed from my corpus by using simply maximum likelihood estimate. So, uh, how do you compute prob probability of the sense as I number of times the sense is used divided by number of times this word is used and probability of a particular feature given the sense, sense number of times this feature is observed with the sense divided by number of times all other features are or number of times the sense is used. So, these are simple formula for MLEs and you use that and plug into the algorithm and you have your Nybage model ready for, for, for using. And you can use some other approaches like decision list algorithm. So, what is the idea? So, here, so you will use, so this hypothesis of one sense per collocation. Now, what is this one sense per collocation hypothesis? For a given word, idea is that with a particular collocation, it is used only in one sense. For example, take the word like bat. We saw there are two, two different senses. One is like a cricket, cricket bat and another is like a flying mammal. Now, uh, suppose you take this collocation cricket bat. Okay. So, the word cricket coming before bat. With this collocation, the word bat will always be used in one sense only, not the other sense. And this is the idea. Can I capture the collocations to find out with this collocation, this word will be used only in this sense and with the other collocations, it will be used in another other sense. And this is called the one collocation per sense property, oh, sorry one sense per collocation property. And so, how do I start about uh, getting these set of collocations for a for a ambiguous word? So, initially I can try out all the possible set of nearby birds that, that occur with, with this word more, uh, more often. And once I have done that, for each such collocation, I can compute what is the probability of a particular sense being used uh, for this collocation with respect to the other senses. Now, take the simple case where the word has only two sense, sense A and sense B. So, for a given collocation, I will find out what is the probability of sense A given the collocation and what is the probability of sense B given this collocation. Now, question is once I have found both these numbers, what will be a function that will tell me how good this collocation is. Now, this collocation would be good if one of these probabilities is high and another probability is quite low. So, collocation indicates sense A if this probability divided by this probability is high and it will indicate sense B if the inverse of that is high. And this simple measure we used to come find out what collocations for a word are more important than others. So, so I come, so this and I take a log of this and this is called the log likelihood ratio. Log of probability of sense A given the collocation I divided by probability of sense B given collocation I. And then higher log likelihood means more evidence. So, what I will do for different collocations that I have extended for the word, these can be some uh, simple words that occur a lot with this word in different context. I will compute these log likelihood scores and then I'm, uh, I will arrange them in their decreasing order okay. and this will give me the decision list. So, now, so here is an example. Suppose you have some training data and here the ambiguous word is plant okay, and you are trying to extend various collocations that can help me to find out whether the science used is A, age in the sense of plant life and whether the science is B in the sense of manufacturing. So, suppose I, I, I run my algorithm and I find out that the collocation plant growth is having a very low likelihood, high likelihood that is 10.12 
and this this is for the sense a. What does that mean? Log of probability sense a given plant growth divided by probability sense b given plant growth will become 10.12 and this is the highest among all the collocations. So, this comes out on top and I say sense is a. Suppose similarly the second collocation is if the word car occurs in plus minus k words around this uh, ambiguous word plant, then the sense would be b and this has a log likelihood of 9.68 and so on. Okay. And so, for with each likelihood I have a sense. Now, once I have that I can use it directly as my decision list classifier. So, what I will do at run time whenever I am given the sentence I will find out if this collocation is present plant growth. If this is present sense is a. If not whether the word car occurs in plus minus k words around plant if so sense is b. If not if plant height occurs sense is a and so on. So, so when I get a sentence at runtime like pluck in flowers affects plant growth, I will take this sentence and run it through this decision list classifier and accordingly wherever I find a match I immediately provide the sense and I stop. Now, one thing you have to be careful here with these numbers. So, uh, so remember the in formula we have a probability term in the denominator and it can also be 0 in some cases. So, you might have to use some sort of a smoothing, you can use add one smoothing or some other smoothing method for that. So, once you do that you can come up with this uh, decision list classifier and at run time given a sentence you can easily compute what is the sense that should be used here. Here is another example of a decision list classifier like you are discriminating between bass and bass, the fish and music sense. So, it can be something like that. Suppose this is how your uh, different collocations are ordered as per their log likelihood. So, you make a decision tree if the word fish occurs in plus minus k words, if yes, sense is fish, fish, if no, if the collocation striped base occurs, if yes, fish, if no, get if the word guitar occurs, this is directly coming from the ordered list of log likelihood. And this you can run through a new sentence to find out the appropriate sense of the word bus. So, we saw some of the algorithms that 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 were using knowledge based approaches and machine learning approaches. Now, in the next lecture we will also talk, talk about some other approaches that are uh, either semi supervised or unsupervised, but in general there are many many different algorithms that you can apply on this task. We are only providing you uh, very brief ideas on some of those. So, Thank you. So, so I will see you in the next lecture.